ready, Rob? Woo! Wacky Woo! and wild. Woo! Are you a wild and crazy guy? I, I am. Ooh, how do you do the Steve Martin? I think it was, I don't know. It was crazy. Anyways, it is Wild and Wacky Friday, everybody. Welcome. I hope we don't want to knock stuff over here. <laughs> no, there goes the bar. <laughs> we are getting a little crazy. I don't know what happened this week. Did our minds melt? Is it too hot? And we just decided it's I think melting. so. I think everything has just come to a head at this point. Yeah, I think so too. So we welcome you to this, this night where we're just going to get crazy with Negronis. We're tell you all about that and then just a crazy cheese plate I, I, i'm telling you rob's the mongers they were like shaking their heads making these plates <laughs> today like what are we eating but i tried some of them and they're very very good good so looking forward to it yeah. um for those of you that have never been here um welcome i'm gina and i'm robbie g yeah. and we are the um crazy cheese people at benissimo cheese and happy to do these rituals and teach you all about cheese and some of our favorite things Absolutely. yes yes Sounds good. And for those of you back again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. We really, really appreciate it and hope you have fun with this one tonight because these are all really wild and different. Um, so um, if you have a YouTube account, we are able to chat um, on the live chat and that's where we, how we can handle questions. So feel free to start sending them and I'm going to try to make sure that we get through them as we go. If you don't, you can just watch along and see the answers to all the questions. Random cheese questions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but what we're really looking for, this one's going to be more about just tasting these even for us and just reacting to them so i'm excited some of these i haven't had some i have had but these are just the ones that we have discovered over the years kind of playing around um you know in the shop where we bring our our bag lunch to the shop and then of course we have all this great cheese laying around and voila we come up with some crazy weird bizarre combinations and it just um brings home the point that there that there's nothing that that is too crazy yes. to try you should the only rule is to is to break all the rules. It's to break all the rules and have some fun. Yeah. So what we're gonna start with, Robbie G, is a drink. Yes, a drink. <laughs> a classic aperitivo. You know what that is? Um, a a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Another a fancy word, a very sexy word for a drink. It sounds like appetizer or something. It is. It is an appetizer. Appetizer drink. Yes, an appetizer drink. Um, invented by the Italians or the French. There's what I understand. There's definitely. There's rumors that it really started in France at the aperitif, Mm -hmm. but really took off in uh, Turin, Italy, in the 1800s, believe it or not, with this drink that we're gonna make today, the Negroni. Are we ready for the Negroni? Yeah. So Negroni, everybody, um, a gin drink. And so everybody got their little kits, most of you did. But if you didn't, there's three ingredients is all to Negroni. Gin, vermouth, and Campari. Aperol, if you're in a pinch, Aperol will work as well, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, But what I learned about making a Negroni and an aperitivo is the reason that they did this, Rob, was because it opens the pathway to the stomach for the meal that is to follow. (laughs) So how Italian is that, right? (laughs) right. It's the Italian twist to why they're drinking so much. (laughs) But even previous to that... You can rationalize anything. I was cracking up. Yeah, you can't rationalize anything. I was cracking up because it was like, it was always used for medicinal purposes Uh because back then, you know, it could cure all anal ailments. It would make you feel better. Well, Uh, yeah. (laughs) Of course it'll make you feel better. Oh, sure. So anyways, to make the Negroni, it is super easy, everybody. It's equal parts of all three of these uh, liqueurs. So if I can open it, because it is very hot and sweaty, um, equal parts happens to be one of each of these um, bottles. How convenient. I know, isn't that convenient? So I'm I'm just gonna go whole hog and mix the whole thing. Then I'll tell you about a little bit about each of these liqueurs. But um, what I also read, Rob, is that these best serve chilled, Mm -hmm. but unlike James Bond, Negronis should be stirred, Mm -hmm. not shaken. Ah. So I guess it has to do with little ice particles and things like that that they don't want into the drink. But so I'm going to do what is recommended. I have a little book called Mr. Boston. It's uh-huh. like a old that. school you do, <laughs> Mr. Too. Bartending thing. So yeah, because yeah. you used it at Mr. A's or uh, like, is that just still a classic? I, right? I, I bought it because I was applying for jobs like 20 years ago. Oh wow. And I think I put on some of my um, applications that I had bartending experience, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was too high in Mr. Boston. Let me try to memorize some, uh, some cocktails here. <laughs> Let's do a cocktail. <laughs> Did you know the Negroni then? I probably studied the Probably, okay. yeah. yeah. Okay. But I was never a big Negroni no, I I want to get to be a Negroni drink. I want to have an aperitivo every night before my meal because how cool is that, right? Mm-hmm. And how fun. So, 
stirred, not shaken, equal parts over ice. So I've got my cool ice cube and I'm just going to pour, I'm going to guess not too much because seriously, that's a lot of liqueur. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone, it's five o'clock somewhere, it's five o'clock here. Cheers, prost, salute. A little bit of the Negroni. Yes. Let's see what we think. So um, definitely aromatic, herbal, herbaceous because of the liqueurs that are in here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ah. Oh, oh my god, I do love it. that. I sniff it. Uh huh. Doesn't smell too powerful. But I forgot one key ingredient that's on everybody's plate, and that is the orange peel. So I learned that when you peel, all, make sure you don't get any of the white, the pith, um, when you peel it, because that's bitter. Mm -hmm. But just get the, the very skin and put it along the rim first, get a little of the natural oils, mm -hmm. and then in the glass. Now I've got my official. A little zest. Ready. A little zest. Now let me see if it changes the, uh, the flavor at all. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fun. That was an evil laugh. Like, it was an evil <laughs> laugh. It's gonna be an evil, a good, good, evil laugh. So um, let's see, Rob. Well, I I see that I'm gonna have to fix something on the chat. Okay. So be patient there, everyone with the chat. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell everybody a little bit? Sure, just sure. walk around the board before yeah. we start, like we kind of do. Uh huh. And then um, hopefully that's all fixed. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to come up with an order. Um, unless Gina is, do you have the order up with on the um, on the labels? Is that how we? Oh yeah. Do? Okay. Like, if I may say, <laughs> I'm back. Um, I have burrata first on the label, yeah. and then parm. Yeah, yeah. But I think you should use the parm with this drink because you know who does that? The Invigatorium. Right downstairs. Yeah, right downstairs. They always serve a shard of Parmigiano Reggiano mm -hmm. with the Negroni. So I would say if you're getting nibbly already to get started, start with the parm. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through the mm -hmm. uh, the cheeses so we know what's what on the plate. But like Gina said, save um, save some of the parm. Have some now with with the drink, a small bite, but save some for when we do the fun pairing. So in this little tub is the burrata, uh, which we were gonna we're gonna use for the first for the first pairing tonight. Uh, the second cheese. On the plate is the parm. You probably all know Parmigiano Reggiano, the most popular cheese in the world. Easy one to spot. The third one we're gonna taste is wrapped in this meat, and that looks like speck, and that's called the Capricharm, and that is a kind of a stinker, uh, which I can't wait to try that. <laughs> the, the fourth cheese on the plate is the Pleasant Ridge Reserve, and that is this firm cheese with a little rind on it. And it's got a kind of a more yellowish color or straw color to it. Um, that's the Pleasant Ridge Reserve, which is one of my favorites. I'm excited to try that one. The, f the next cheese is the Truffle Tremor. The Truffle Tremor is this goat cheese. So it's a white cheese with little black flecks in it. And we'll explain what that is. And it's got a little rind, a brie looking rind on it. So it should be pretty easy to identify. I mean. Um, goat cheese. It's the one that looks like a goat cheese. <laughs> I don't know if that's helpful or not. Uh, and then the, the last one, we usually save the, the strongest and the funkiest for last. And a lot of times, uh, if there's a blue cheese, that means that it's going to be the blue cheese last. And the blue cheese is the cheese that is blue. Uh, it's, this is the Smoky Blue from Oregon. And we are going to uh, have that one last. So I think Gina is working on the chat yes. function so that we'll be able to answer questions or uh, and hear your um, your feedback. Um, but I would say um, before we get into the, the first pairing, which is the burrata, and you guys are munching on the parm and your Negroni, I'll talk a little bit about burrata. Now, I think I told the story of burrata uh, a couple weeks ago on one of these virtual tastings, but um, what I would say about burrata is the, the name burrata means buttered, and uh, it's just, it's a very, it's, a, it's actually a very mild fresh cheese. And when I say fresh cheese, uh, I mean a cheese that is not meant to be aged for any amount of time. Uh, in other words, it's meant to be enjoyed as close to the day it's made as possible, which is completely opposite from a cheese like Parmigiano Reggiano, which is gonna be number two, which, it's, you're not supposed to really eat that cheese until after at least one year. 12 months mm -hmm. is the minimum mm -hmm. age mm -hmm. a cheese like that um, is supposed to go. Now, um, sparing some of the, the background story of burrata, 
I'll talk a little bit about the cheese maker. We, there's a couple of uh, cheese makers in Los Angeles that we've uh, we bought our burrata from over the years, but this is from one called Di Stefano, and they are an Italian family. Mimo is our buddy, and he's the patriarch, but his four sons, basically, well, three of his sons work for him, and one of them, when he gets out of high school, probably will work for him Super as well. Super family affair, yeah. They're awesome. We've, we've been up there a few times. Mm -hmm. I actually had a, um, well, we called it an internship. If we were a few years ago, I went up there and I just asked if I could just work oh, for right. free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. and just to learn how to stretch mozzarella and uh, and make burrata and like and, and film it and use it for the classes and yeah. we became really really f uh, friendly and uh, they're they're great guys but they're from southern Italy and they they um, have been making cheese in southern California for I don't know probably twenty years or so now maybe not that long um, yeah. but um, they make all of the southern Italian classics and that includes ricotta mozzarella, burrata, and uh, it, for my money, they make the best burrata around. Yeah, burrata's really great. Just mozzarella, did you already talk about that? With the cream and the... Yeah, I told the whole story a, a while back, but yeah. it's a fresh cheese, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I re actually remember when we, we used to buy from another company, a rival company in LA. Yes, they're for almost neighbors too, yeah. which is so weird. I know, and they, they were <laughs> like friends, sorry Mima, like friends that had a, I guess story. a falling out. Yeah, there's a, something happened. Um, but uh, I, I remember being in at a conference somewhere, and the the De Stefano salesperson kept following me around. Really? Yes. That's so, do you remember who it was? I do. Mm -hmm. I know her okay. name and everything. She's yeah, more, yeah, we're friends. She doesn't work there anymore. Yeah. But she she finally she followed up when we got back to California, and she's like, hey. Um, if you wanna, if you wanna come up sometime, we'd love to have you um, come out to the facility and see the the plant. We the 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 other mozzarella producer, burrata producer, would never let us come visit the facility. No, we could never see. Yeah. And so Strange. that was a big mm -hmm. selling point, and we went there, and uh, and just kind of hit it off, and and uh, at that to us goes a long way when the cheesemaker is willing to you know mm -hmm. start and then and establish and. In harvest or cult, yeah. you know have a relationship with, with or cultivate yeah. a relationship exactly super cool mm -hmm. cool so um, the burrata did you try the combo though that I have was, not that we it. recommended <laughs> on <laughs> okay do you remember these as a kid everybody <laughs> pop rocks okay I will tell you about pop rocks a they do not make your stomach explode if you <laughs> eat them with coca-cola I guess that was the rumor back in the 80s that that would happen and they said remember the kid from the life cereal commercials Mikey yeah, yeah. Somebody Mikey claimed likes that it. Mikey likes it and that Mikey ate cola with Pop Rocks and that he died because, oh my God. because it exploded in his I never stomach. heard that one. Oh yeah, okay. And it got so bad that the company had to shut down and the FDA had to set up a hotline Seriously? for people calling and saying, are Pop Rocks going to make my stomach explode if I drink it with Coca-Cola? That was like the original conspiracy. Sorry, Amazing, not to bring that right? <laughs> yeah. But Pop Rocks are fun. We got cherry ones today because later mm -hmm. we do we do have cola and I think mixing them together would be super, super fun. But it's good on the burrata. Are you ready to try Let's that? Do it. If you haven't eaten the Pop Rocks, you guys bust it open and try it. We went with cherry because cherry is good with all cheeses. Oh, yeah. But I'm going to make this for Rob because I already ate one. Well, I ate a couple earlier. But I wanted to see if they would pop on the liquid of the cheese, and they don't. You still have to put your mouth in there. Just carbon dioxide that makes it pop. That was like, but, um, you just made me think of Rice Krispies. Remember Rice, rice? Krispies when you put the Rice the Krispies, in? yeah, and they would go. Pruk, 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 pruk. But how pretty is that? Okay, you eat that. Okay. And everyone, oh, it did, still. It, pop, it popped. It popped. Because there's been a couple pops. Oh, I hear it. It is popping. Oh, yeah, it's Yay. totally popping. It <laughs> okay. sounds like Rice Krispies. I can't tell if it's the humidity or is that I'm sweating so bad because it's so hot. Or it hit the cheese, but it's good. No, oh, no. <laughs> my mouth going to explode? <laughs> oh, my God. Burrata needs something, and that is fun. Because mm. you could put honey with burrata or whatever, so why not Pop Rocks? Mm. I think it's delicious. Uh, I, I mean, think it's delicious. So <laughs> I should mention um, the, the different types of pairings and because we can, we can talk about what what kind of pairing we think this is. You have complementary and contrasting. Complementary, similar flavors that come together. Contrasting, opposites. To me, this the candy is sweet. Yeah. The milk, I mean, yeah, the, yeah, the, mm -hmm. the, the cheese is milky, lactic, so you have that contrast there. Mm -hmm. There's textural pairing. This is like <laughs> ultimate textural ultimate pairing. Ultimate textural, yeah. What a mouthfeel, right? And then there's regional uh, pairing, which I mean, that applies to wine from a region that is paired with cheese from a certain region. But maybe these Pop Rocks are from a factory in Los Angeles. Where the oh, that would be so, then it would be terroir? Are we getting a taste of terroir? Urban terroir. Terroir. You're going to crack up. 
product of Spain. Oh, we should have paired it with a Manchego or something. That, yeah, we should have. <laughs> that would be terroir next time. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like it. It's just fun. It makes me feel like a kid again. No. I feel so adult and cool <laughs> with this and then this. Dang. <laughs> but I wonder if you could use this as a rim on, um, like a margarita, anything. Why yeah. not put it as a rim? But I guess once you get it wet, it would already pop anyway, mm. but the flavor could be okay. Fun. Pop rocks and burrata. I like it. Did you like it? I, I did like it, okay. actually. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> I, I didn't want to just kind of chew it and swallow it right away. I wanted to kind of savor it and let the, let the pop rocks do their thing in my mouth, so I let it, uh, let it sit for a little while. Um, okay. We're finally online, everybody. All right. Finally online to chat. So sorry. Always something. Okay. <laughs> so pop rocks. Yay. I think we could use some of it later, but for now, I think that was really delish. Okay. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Which do which you want to go to next? And if you have leftover burrata, play around with other stuff in your house. With salt. Oh, yeah. oh, olive oil, balsamic, mm -hmm. salt, pepper. Yeah. Mwah. We do a burrata bowl that we just put roasted tomatoes on. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah. I mean, burrata, to me, that could be a bowl for breakfast. <laughs> a burrata ball, yeah. anything on it. Um, just bread. A loaf of bread yeah. and a happy as a clam, right? Yeah. Um, Perfect. Perfect. Well, why don't we just talk about the parm and Negroni? Did you taste yeah, it Yeah, I did. Did you taste it? I'm the not. parm is so good. Parmesan Oregano, not to be confused with Parmesan, mm -hmm. which isn't the official deal, but it's super good. Oh my you gosh. mentioned Grana Padano, mm -hmm. same family. But isn't that so good? Mm. It's really sweet today, and this has been sitting out for an hour. All cheeses, if we hadn't mentioned before, taste so much better when they're at room temp. It only took about five minutes to come to room temp because it is so hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they taste really, really good when they are. And I think this with the Negroni is fabulous. Mm -hmm. This one mm -hmm. has some crunchies in it, so there's some mm -hmm. good age on this Parmesan. Good age. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, it's really good. And I think, you guys, gin is great with Parmesan or Reggiano. Mm -hmm. This gin, everybody, the, the, the botanist, is from Scotland. It's only, there's only two gins made on this island of Scotland. This is one of them. Oh, super interesting. You'll see the number 22 on the label. They have raw people that forage for the herbs mm -hmm. and botanicals that go into this. Um, and there are 22 of them in there. Oh, wow. And I've got them on the list. I mean, there's such things, you know, as heather, elderflower. Juniper, of course. Yeah, juniper, the key, key ingredient of gin. Mm. Um, but that gives it that herbaceousness. I think that's what makes it go so, so good with parm. Ladies' so like bed straw. I've never heard of that. Not sure what that herb is, but the ladies' bed straw. Sounds, ladies' bed straw. Is that sexy? I like that. Is I that, that, think yeah. so. Yeah, I should give my wife some ladies' bed ladies straw. Ladies' bed straw, yes. Well, she's on, so send ladies' bed straw in your finger. <laughs> and gorth. Gorth. I don't know what gorth is, is either. Yeah. But uh, Parmigiano Reggiano. Opposite from Burrata, of course, a classic. I mentioned um, at the very beginning that that Parmigiano Reggiano is the most popular cheese in the in the world. That is true. Um, it, when we're talking of a specific cheese, not a style, but a specific cheese made in a very specific way, comes from a, a specific place, Emilia Romagna, mm -hmm. around the the city of Parma in Italy, and always cow's milk. Um, you know, the cows have to graze within a certain area. All kinds of rules and regulations go, go um, around it. it yeah. yeah, and you have to, in order to, to use that name, Parmesan Reggiano, you have to follow all the rules very strictly. Or, or you get in big trouble. Yeah. You have to call it something else. Like Parmesan. Grana Padana. Or Grana Padana. <laughs> um, Sapporo del Piave. Sapporo del Piave. Yeah, this is all kind of the same. Piave similar, Vecchio. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're all, they're all aged cheeses. A lot of times people compare the eight, the Pecorinos to Parmigiano Reggiano, but they're the 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 only similarity really is that they're really hard and yeah, age. Because that's it. Yeah, everything else is different. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the Pecorinos, mm -hmm. like Pecorino Romano, is is a sheep's milk. They're always sheep's milk cheeses. Um, and <clears throat> whatever, if you're doing a pasta or some kind of dish, of course you can always sub um, another hard cheese for. I mean, it's going to have a lot of the same characteristics, but there's no there's no right or wrong there's, there's yeah. no like fail when it comes to whatever cheese you want to put with it exactly dish. it can be yum yeah mm -hmm. it's gonna mm -hmm. be super yummy super yum all right are we going on to the next yeah this okay it's completely different mm -hmm. so we're gonna completely switch uh, directions mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. and we're gonna go the savory route here yes mm -hmm. savory with this little bad boy your little wrap you guys so this one wow it is ooey and gooey at the mm -hmm. moment is a Belgian cheese, washed rind, uh -huh. super savory, but Rob, we have wrapped it um, in speck, 
which Ooh. is a smoked prosciutto mm -hmm. from northern Italy, southern Austria, to roll that area. Um, so slightly smoked prosciutto is speck, but underneath it, you guys, um, is a pickled kohlrabi. <laughs> Do you know what that is? I'm, I know I'm cool Robbie. Cool Robbie. Pickled. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pickled cool yeah. Robbie. Touche. Okay. Touche. Yeah. Nice one. <laughs> but pickled things with washed rinds, there is the tip of the day, don't you think? Yeah. Like pickles. Yes. Remember how you know grandpas would eat Limburger with pickles? Yeah, yeah. And it's just, just onions. That kind of thing. Onions, yeah. exactly, right? What do they call yeah. the plow like a plowman's lunch or something? Plowman's like lunch, yeah. yeah, exactly. It is. It's the, mm -hmm. the cheese, the pickles, yeah. the bread, the meat. And this is kind of all of that in one bite. That's a great, yeah. actually, that's a really good tip. So when we do mm -hmm. like charcuterie um, boards, which is meat boards, we do, you'll, you might notice, like we do more pickled items, like pickled yeah. peppers or yes, cornichons, little baby mm -hmm. pickles. Mm -hmm. They go so well with mm -hmm. meats. Um, but also what's yeah. interesting about this type of cheese, and these are washed rind cheeses. They're also called Trappist style cheeses. Yeah, this is a stinker. <laughs> and this one's from Belgium. This one's unique mm -hmm. because it's, it's actually made with goat's milk. Yeah, Usually that's they're made with, mm -hmm. with cow's milk. Mm -hmm. But those types of cheeses have kind of a meaty quality, mm -hmm. an aroma, and a flavor to them. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try this. This is so meaty. And it's funky. The cheese is funk in itself. Mm -hmm. The goat milk comes out. The washed mm. rind comes out. Mm. It tastes to me. I like that. It's a barn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a bit of a barn that smoke has filtered through. Yep. Are you getting the crunch of the kohlrabi? Yep. I can hear the crunch. <laughs> kohlrabi, you guys. I don't know. It's not so popular here, um, but it's kind of known as the German cabbage. Um, it's German. Mm -hmm. So my dad, okay, Gert, my mom used to grow these in the garden, kohlrabi. Really? They grow underground. It's in a bulb. It looks like a small head of cabbage just huh. a, or, a, or a very large Brussels sprout. Uh -huh. Maybe that's even a better description. Um, but it's more solid inside like a turnip. So it's actually called a German, German turnip. Mm -hmm. um, but you can eat it raw, you can eat right out of the ground. My dad would pick it, peel it, and we would just sit there and eat it and crunch it, um, cook it, Pickle it, yeah. but kohlrabi, it's really good for you because it's in the broccoli, Russell, that family. That's delicious. Turnip, it's delicious, right? And you pickled it yourself. I pickled it myself, yes. Yeah. It's so Come easy to pickle. Some credit. Yes, because I watch way too many episodes of <laughs> Chopped. <laughs> we can see what we can do. Mm -hmm. But I pickled it kind of Asian y because I used rice vinegar, um, so it had a little bit of that, but then just, you know, all the pickling herbs. And uh -huh. Easy to pickle, but yum, right? What do you yeah, think? It's I funky. love it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, it's. This is salty, really salty mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. me, but the, the, the uh, kohlrabi kind of mm -hmm. balances out a little bit. Of course, it gives a whole another element of texture to the pairing, which I really like. I always love crunchy, um, so I was not expecting it to be that crunchy. Um, if you go so far as to eat the rind of the cheese, which I haven't gotten there yet, you're gonna get a grittiness and you'll get some more texture, but it can be a little uh, bitter as well. Not, not It should be overwhelmingly bitter, but you'll, yeah. you'll get some grit there. Um, and uh, and then the speck, of course, is kind of gamey and, uh, again, very salty. Um, but uh, I think you mentioned it's similar to a prosciutto, but it's a, like a northern Italian or, or German version of it. And, and you get a little smokiness on it, too. Um, and yeah. and the, the meat itself is less... It's, it's a little bit darker. It's not quite as like pink and light as some of the other prosciutto. So um, there's a lot going on there. But one of the things to, to, to pairing is not so much to do with those types of pairing that I mentioned earlier, but kind of a, just a general rule of thumb is to, you want things to, you want light with light and kind of big with big or robust True. with robust. So they don't so, yeah. kill each other. Yeah. You don't want one thing to totally overwhelm the other things. Mm -hmm. You want them all to kind of balance out, be well, when you're well balanced, that's what, yeah. that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, this is to me really well balanced. Okay, pairing. because you said there were no rules. There's no so. rules. There's no rules except... Be balanced. Can that be a slogan? Don't no. be balanced. Be delicious. Be delicious. That should be the slogan. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's true, though. You love that one. I do. I like and that one. Your first kohlrabi yeah. for cool Robbie. Yeah, thank you. Pickled cool Robbie. Pick, pickled cool Robbie. <laughs> yeah, but what a great, great veggie. Need to learn, need, need to know it more. Yeah. I got this one at Ranch 99. They have it. Um, I see it all the time. I see it more in the kind of other different um, ethnic markets for yeah. some reason. But anyway. Well, the pi pickled things, is a, that's a good tip, and I don't think people think about that yeah. as much. I mean, 
um, you know, you see all the really common stuff like like figs and uh, and grapes and things like that on on cheese boards. Yeah. But we, you know, we try to get more into the the kind of random fresh fruits that mm -hmm. give great color. But it's the same idea, the sweetness kind of balancing it out. Yeah. Um, I had. I actually had a bunch of pickled stuff in my fridge that um, a family member made. Just it was carrots and the jalapenos and stuff. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had a bunch of random cheeses last night, and yeah. I just, I, it was perfect. There's dinner. It was yeah. just a bunch of pickled stuff and, and cheeses, and it was. Yeah. Um, and of course, my my favorite, the types of cheeses I usually have sitting around the house, yeah. are these really strong. You, it is okay. Types of cheeses. Yeah, yeah. Oh I had God. a cheese called Willoughby last night. Ooh, Willoughby, yeah. very nice. Where'd you get your cheese? Uh, just the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I went to Ralph's. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's good. No. Awesome, awesome. I love it. That was tasty. It's good with the Negroni. Yeah. I'm going to say I like this aperitivo time. Yeah. yeah this might become a, a little bit of an addiction. It's yeah. always aperitivo, aperitivo time aperitivo somewhere. Aperitivo time, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I think it goes good with that bitter orange, which is Campari. Yeah. This is what everybody's adding the bitterness to the, the drink is Campari. So this was an odd fact, Rob. They used, you know, um, some cheeses used to color, turn their orange color with yeah. like marigold petals, uh -huh. and now it's a natto seed that mm -hmm. makes it orange. They used to make Campari with um, to get the color. Mm -hmm. It was crushed insects. Ugh. So there's some insects that would make impart this color. Do you know when they stopped doing that? Uh, nineteen. 90, I don't know. Close, uh, close, 1980, really? which I'm, I was kind of surprised. Really? I thought they might have stopped I was making a joke. 60s was, or something, because yeah. this has been around since the 1700s. I think it's on the bottom. I thought you were going to say, like, the 1800s, they stopped yeah. doing that. Yeah, no, 1980, they stopped using cricket, so oh now gosh. it is just yeah, to the orange. Um, but this one's got, like, um, cocoa, saffron, yeah. and lots of really great herbaceousness to mm -hmm. it. Aperol, we mentioned earlier, it's kind of it's the sweeter cousin of Campari. Mm -hmm. Campari is really strong to take for a lot of people, and mm -hmm. Aperol they kind of created mm -hmm. for the sweeter palates. But um, you can make a spritz, just like an Aperol spritz, with Campari as well. What do you so do? You just take, like, soda water yeah. or something? Yep, soda water. So there's th three ways to make a spritz. Traditionally, uh -huh. it was with um, Prosecco. So uh, Aperol Campari with Prosecco. Mm -hmm. You can also do it with white wine if you don't like the bubble bubbles. Uh -huh. You can do it with <laughs> white wine <laughs> or soda water. Yeah, and nice. just, if you want that. But it gives you that bitter orange, which I absolutely love. Yeah. And again, super with it was super with the Cabernet Charm, and it's super with the Parm. These all these mm -hmm. drinks that you were talking about, they make me think of like you know. When, I've been in Europe at times it, where I've been like cr needing lunch. Like yeah. I was on a different sort of schedule, yes. and everything shuts down because yes. it's siesta time. Like yeah. everybody we just takes a nice break in the mm -hmm. middle of the day, and I'm like, wait, but, I, but I'm hungry. I, like I need to, I need to go find a place to eat. <laughs> Everyone's sleeping, but then once everybody, when people come back to life and they come back out, it is time for the aperitivo. Yep. Yes, I, I'm so, gonna get into that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Depending on where mm -hmm. you are, it's like yeah. the. It's a Negroni, or it's a Prosecco, yep. or it's a Spritz, or whatever. Yes, to open the pathway mm -hmm. to the stomach for the meal. That's right, because mm -hmm. it's going to be a long evening of exactly. eating and drinking. Exactly, I like, like it, I like it. Awesome. <laughs> All right, what next, Rob G? Uh, okay, next is a, is a really weird one, i got to say. I'm a little scared. We Maybe we should call this the Elvis uh, oh, that's, pairing. Oh, why don't you call it that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's call it that. This is the Elvis pairing. This one is Pleasant Ridge Reserve, and banana, and... Peanut butter. <laughs> so, uh, to, to talk about the, the cheese first before we have our bite, uh, Pleasant Ridge Reserve is this guy right here again. So it's the um, Alpine cheese. It is from Wisconsin, and it's from a cheesemaker called Uplands. Really, really um, God, high, highly regarded, highly and, and esteemed, award, highly mm -hmm. esteemed cheesemaker. Um, uh, his name's Andy Hatch. He's a um, great guy, but he he makes this. He's actually um, he took over the the company from the people who created this cheese 30, 40, 30 yeah. years ago maybe, yeah. and it's won a ton of awards. But it is based on a on a French cheese called Beaufort, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was they kind of put their little spin on it uh, in in yeah. Wisconsin, and uh, it's one hundred percent cow's milk, yeah, but raw. it's really mm -hmm. nutty raw. Yeah, um, it's old world style made in the new world, mm -hmm. right? Um, but yeah, won Best in Show three times. No other single cheese I don't think has ever won Best in Show in the American Cheese Competition mm -hmm. than Pleasant Ridge. Yeah. yeah, I think somebody's won twice, but Pleasant Ridge has won three times. Yeah, this yeah. Is, so this American is a younger original. Mm -hmm, American original. It's a bit of a younger wheel. It's not as as hard as some mm -hmm. of them. 
but we got to tour their factory and the not factory. I mean, it's a little house yeah. that they're it's making. It's a farm. They cheese. live on a yeah, farm. Live on the farm. Yep. The cows are out out the front door, and there they are. Yeah. There's a farmhouse out kind of in the middle of a field in mm-hmm. Wisconsin, and they live there. In fact, there's a couple houses out on the farm, and like mm-hmm. one is the cheese maker, and the other one is the the guy who oh, takes care right. of the animals. Yeah. And um, right, right. It's so good. So okay. So why did we do peanut butter rob with this? Oh my gosh, look at that. That's a sandwich. This is a better Lunchable than um, a Lunchable. Mm-hmm. We did peanut butter because nuts and cheese, yeah. and especially Alpine's nuts, like hazelnuts, peanuts, go so well mm-hmm. with cheese. I mean, peanut butter, ground up nuts. Well, and yeah. also like that, so that would be more on the complimentary side to do, to do nuts with uh, Pleasant Ridge Reserve. I actually <laughs> smelled peanut butter um, on the, on the on cheese, cheese before we even put the peanut Me butter Me too. With it. Do you think it's because we were talking about peanut probably, butter? Probably. But you know <laughs> what, I bet so you, much. yeah, I bet you they describe it as having a peanut butter taste. I'm going in. You're going in. Okay, you go first. But the banana. Okay, so I saw this on Iron Chef years ago. The ingredient was banana with Gruyere. And um, it seemed so weird at the time, but then tried it and it was kind of fun. You don't think of the tropical fruits as often with cheese, but banana, it kind of works. Would Elvis approve? That worked. That worked. We should have wrapped it in speck. That could have really been mm. an Elvis, right? Because then you like bacon with it too. Oh yeah. So it could be kind of like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> does it work or is it? Too it does good? work. Is it I too? think it works. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I should say it works for me. Okay. I just took yeah. the whole oh. thing down. I just mm-hmm. took a shot. I didn't eat the rind, but you can't eat the rind. You never eat the rind. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> eat the rind or don't. I like that. Um. I think you could make a fondue that melting all this together. Mm-hmm. Or you could dip a banana into a peanut butter alpine fondue. That's it's fun. Could be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can you can do something like this with um with any of the alpine style cheeses. So Gina just mentioned Gruyere. She saw that on Iron Chef. <laughs> Gruyere, mm-hmm. Beaufort, Comte, they're all those are some of the classics made in, in France and Switzerland. And uh, this is an an American original, but it really is an imitation and that's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. It's just of course, it's an imitation. We came second. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> younger. Um, but but they they're still they can still be very very good. Um, there's you know there there's other cheeses in this family which are the more of like the white cheese with the holes in it. Like we've done the holy cow. A oh, that's times, true. Yes, right, right. And that's a California mm-hmm. version of yeah. Emmental, which is a, they're all in the same family, but they you know they're they're quite different. Mm-hmm. Completely different. Think of it, probably like a Gruyere to Emmental. They're mm-hmm. different. Totally Fontina, mm-hmm. um, Appenzeller, Schnebelhorn, yeah. all of them, Alpines, yeah. but completely different. And Fontina yeah. is from northern Italy, so it's not mm-hmm. even, I mean, you, you yeah. don't even think, but like the region we were talking about where that speck came from is way up there closer. It's more of a, an Alpine area than yeah. it is a... Oh, for sure. I mean, mm-hmm. where the where the Barada comes from in Italy, uh, in the south, oh, yeah. I mean, they're, they might may as well be different countries. From, yeah. from where like the Fontina mm-hmm. or the where the Speck come from in the north. Yeah. They're so north. different. Yeah. It, it, super cool. But I like it. Yeah, I was uh It was good with the, it was good with the Negroni again. I I've actually <laughs> had banana with Uriya before and mm-hmm. it's it's good. I bet it would be fun to do like uh to do something like you said, melt like melt yeah. them together. Like you can do a panini with these kinds of cheeses and they melt yeah. incredibly and banana would be really yummy. We're gonna try that. Mm-hmm. And what well, if we called it the Elvis? Would we? I mean, because everybody understands that that they go together. Why the heck not? Uh, mm-hmm. Duly noted. Note to self. Can <laughs> maybe dress as Elvis that day too. Or maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rob. What do we got next? Because I'm pouring myself a little more negroni. Something. <laughs> All right. The next one is one that we were oh. we were taught <laughs> by the cheesemakers themselves. Right? Yeah. This was, uh, so it's, the cheese is truffle tremor, mm-hmm. and we are pairing it with, yeah. with cola yes. and with just cherry cola. vodka. And cherry vodka. You could do it with the cherry. We'll get to that, too. I've got the cherry pop rocks. We'll get to that, too. The, but the truffle tremor is the soft one on your plate. Yeah. This piece is mangled. But um, a goat cheese, a chev. Yeah, it should, I mean, it should be yeah. pretty. Uh, with truffles. It, the, I'm going to open the cola right now. It should be so easy to think. identify because that's. That looks like what a goat cheese typically, yeah. like a common goat cheese would look like. It's crumbly. It's got a white paste. It um, the black flecks that I mentioned earlier are truffle. I mean, the name should give it away. Truffle tremor. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is from Northern California. It's from a cheesemaker called Cypress Grove, and they're 
their their uh, big cheese is called Humboldt Fog. So a lot of you probably know Humboldt Fog. This is the same base goat's milk cheese as Humboldt Fog. Instead of putting the ash in the cheese, they infuse it with black summer truffles. And the truffles do come from Italy, and they give it a you know an earthy kind of mushroomy mushroominess. Um, this is one where I always eat the rind on, where I don't eat the rind on on, on some cheeses. Usually the, the truffle tremor and breeze, I always eat the rind on, but it's up to you. Um, but we had this pairing first um, up, we were visiting the cheesemaker and they, they laid everything, they gave us a taste. It was so crazy, right? Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. this was like the, it was just a surprise and we were like, come on, really? Like why? Yeah, that seems weird. Why are they why are you doing up? this? Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. but it was, uh, it, it was, was phenomenal. a phenomenal. I'm going to give great. it to you. Yeah. Um, they also paired, I don't know if you remember, Rob, and this is a hideous presentation. Um, they also paired it with some orange absinthe jam. I remember oh, that so clearly, which is why, again, I think it's also good with the Negroni, even though that seems kind of weird. But try it with the cola, you guys. Truffles with cola, I would never have thought together. Um, but they use an Italian truffle salt. Remember when they were making it, pressing it? That's what's giving it the truffle essence. I love it on its own, and it's coating my mouth because it's so velvety and creamy, and you tried it with the cola. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cola's so sweet. I would never think of the sweet with truffle. Those two just balance. Mm -hmm. I kind of lose the truffle, though, a little. Mm. But it, you still a, get truffle? I took a huge bite. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the <sorry>. whole thing. <laughs> so what I like to do when... Um, so if I, if I were sitting down with, like, a, you know, who, whoever it was, like... A, um, a winery, brewery, whoever it was, I would suggest trying the beverage first on its own and trying the, the cheese on its own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then as a third step, try the cheese and and then while the cheese is like yeah. coating your mouth, have a sip of the beverage and then play, have them all in your mouth together for, mm -hmm. a, for a little while. So I kind of skipped the first two parts and I just put a huge piece of truffle tremor in my mouth and kind of let it warm up yeah just like mm -hmm. let it sit in my mouth for a minute and then i took a smaller sip of the coke mm -hmm. and uh, and then i just let it i just waited for a kind minute kind of blossom yeah and uh, it's it does stand up the whole time you get the sweetness on the finish the truffle i got more like in the beginning in the middle yeah but um yeah exactly that's why i lost I a, it at the end but that's why i had a bigger bite of the cheese <laughs> it's always good to have a bigger bite of cheese. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> always always good but i like it oh truffle tremor Handmade wheels, you guys. Mm -hmm. This is so interesting. You talk about Cypress Grove. I mean, um, these these wheels are pressed by hand still to this day, mm -hmm. which is really, really cool with the volume of cheeses that they make up in, um, yeah, you said Arcata, Humboldt County. Humboldt County, they're, um, they're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> uh, I mean, once you get out of... Uh, I mean, they have like the little square there, a little yep. town square, little. And, then, and then you... That's it. They've got Goat a bunch country. of goats, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, they just run, they do a phenomenal job. I don't know how many goats they have, but they have yeah. just a, their facility is just so mm -hmm. modern and the, the yeah. goats look so happy. Remember all the, the modern like milking barns yes, that they had and everything? Cool. But, um, super cool. Yeah, they've got a bunch of cheeses and they, they're very creative with their marketing. So <clears throat> they have a lot of goat cheeses with kind of fun names Purple Haze. Oh, yeah. Speaking of music. Um, psychedelic mm -hmm. has dill in it. Mm -hmm. There's one called Sergeant Pepper that yeah. has red pepper and like harissa. Yeah, exactly. Um, so there's a, there's a bunch of, there's one that's plain called Miss Natural. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, Rob, if I explode, it's been <laughs> so great knowing you, yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to go with the Coke and the cherry while what, you keep, yeah. Yeah. What was the thing they used to feed, like people would feed to like pigeons, you know, that would make, is it like, uh. What? Uh, yeah, it's not not cool. But okay, I, not cool. Pop rocks, probably not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Who doesn't like cherry coke? Uh, Yum. I like. I have to admit, I kind of like. And truffle trauma. The the cherry with the truffle is good too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's weird, but it's good. <laughs> weird but good. Mm -hmm. Look at how humid it is, everybody. The, my pop rocks are glued together. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I'm going to give you some. You have one giant. <laughs> yeah, one giant. Rock. All right, truffle tremor. And you guys, also, we put in one extra little spirit into everybody's kit, and that is a vodka and soda. This one happens to be called from a company called High Noon. They're actually in San Diego. Mm. So they make all these kinds. And again, we went with cherry. I was trying to keep one little a thing cherry in this wildness. Yeah. 
Um, but a cherry vodka. I think these are the like um, Bartles and James wine cooler of mm-hmm. this generation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just really light yeah, and fluffy and, and, and stuff. That I think now's the time. I mean, if the Negroni is too heavy, because I don't know how much more I should could <laughs> drink. But then you could go to something a little. You're at home. It's fine. I'm at home. I'm not going anywhere now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I like that truffle. Mm-mm-mm. Fun, fun, fun. Oh, good. We've had a couple of comments that, you know, some people normally don't like. Uh, Carol, hello, Carol. Uh, don't normally like truffles, but this one, it's a good introduction to truffles. Yeah. It's not so intense and in your face. And it, it's different. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. um, I, I, I don't know if, if off the top of my head I can think of any other truffled goat cheeses. Hmm. Can you think of any? No, that's I mean, a good I know point. there's like a lot of triple creams. Yeah. We have um, the there's, harder cheeses, pecorinos. Mm-hmm. The Robiola Trelate has some, has, has one some that has goat. a goat. But this That's is kind full, of it. full yeah. goat, and so you get uh-huh. that tanginess of the goat's milk. Yeah, um, I don't. I think it's a good balance. I think yeah. you got a lot. Of, it's it, there's a lot going on with that super cheese. Super fun, super fun. We've had such a, a wide range of flavors, mm-hmm. but I like them all. I don't know I, if it's the Negroni talking or uh, just the no, wide range I of like flavors. Everything. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I will say so the uh, I really like the the truffle trimmer and coke. I knew I was gonna like that one. The Pleasant Ridge with the banana yeah. and peanut butter. To me, that was that was great. Like, there's nothing yeah. bad about it, and it had a lot going mm-hmm. on. the 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 burrata and the pop rocks that was more to me gimmicky. Like, it was sure. after tasting yeah. the other ones, that's yeah. my least favorite. Exactly. And you're like, <laughs> okay, that's fun if you're 12. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm wearing my popsicle shorts, and nobody oh, you can can't see. see. Yeah. <laughs> um, Next time. And then what was the other one we had? Parm. The Cam- and- Cabra Charm. Did you like that one? I did. Although it was, to me, that was more of like. That's just that's just delicious. Like it just tasted like a yeah. good appetizer, like okay. a nice savory, like a little tapa. Yeah, like a appetizer for your appetite. Yeah, it didn't it didn't seem so weird to me. I mm-hmm. guess. Okay. Yeah. True. Okay. Or wacky. Wacky or weird. Well, one other ingredient I want to get to the Negroni and tell you a little bit about before we forget is this Antica um, vermouth. So vermouth, Rob. In this country, we think of vermouth only like to put in a drink, like mm-hmm. as an element of a drink. But honestly, just drinking this, this is one of the best, considered one of the best in the world. It's mm. super, super smooth. And the reason is they um, add a lot of vanilla to it. Mm. So it is known as one of just the best ones. Rob, people drink this just on its own over ice. And I gotta say, friends of ours brought over a white vermouth mm. that we just poured over ice, just like this, as an aperitivo. Mm. It was delicious. Would never have thought about it on its own. Is I it always sweet? just use them. This one's a little sweet. Yeah. There are dry vermouths, which are typically then used in aperitivos. Um, and then there's sweeter vermouths, which are typically used in digestives. Mm. Digestives is the after dinner version because you need to have alcohol to <laughs> open the stomach. And I don't know, you have to, after you've had your meal, then you have to have a digestive to um, settle the stomach after oh, yeah. everything you've eaten. So anyway, vermouth is a key part to aperitifs and aperitivos everywhere. Yeah. So it'll be like this one. I, I'm gonna try this one on its own at some point, um, just on ice. But together, this is the bomb. <laughs> I am now a Negroni fan. I've had really bad Negronis. I think this probably because these liquors are really nice. Mm-hmm. This is really, really good. Nice. Or I'm really, really thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> could be. Could be. Could be. Okay. So we just are. Uh, Margo asked. Hold on. She's, we're getting ah, some questions. Here. Margo. Hello, Margo. You asked what the parm was supposed to go with. And we start with the parm. Um, the parm was really meant to go with the Negroni. Um, we know a restaurant downtown here, a cool cocktail bar, and they serve just a, a sliver of parm um, on top of every Negroni that they serve. So we said, you know, that's a super, super idea. Let's share that with everybody. Um, so, meant to just go with the Negroni, but I gotta say, we tasted it. I tasted it with the Pop Rocks. I ate it all now. I can't try it with the cola, but um, tasted it with the Pop Rocks and it was delicious too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, parm with Negroni and the orange. That, Flavor together is awesome. We do, you know, like I, I was looking at the, the pieces of parm and, and uh, a little bit goes a long way. Believe it or not, um, there's more there's more um, fat per per ounce in a piece of Parmigiano Reggiano than there is in, in the burrata or in a triple cream because it's so much more condensed. And so you um, you get full really fast from eating a Parmigiano Reggiano and, we, and you don't want to think of it as just a cheese that you shave onto pastas or something else. It's a great snacking cheese, but you have to just kind of be very, um, you have to be very uh, careful about how much you're, you're consuming yes. of it because you can really fill it fast on it. Yes. Um, 
we're gonna the the last one we're gonna do is going to be the smoky blue. Yes. And the smoky blue is mm -hmm. uh, obviously blue cheese. It's from Oregon. Mm -hmm. It's from a cheesemaker called Rogue Creamery, and um, mm -hmm. they're in Southern Oregon. This one is um, smoked over hazelwood. Yeah, chips. super nice, yeah. I mean, who would have thought, you don't get many smoky cheeses anyway unless uh, they're overly smoked. This is not overly smoked. It's lightly smoked, yeah. and uh, and then uh, to me it kind of balances out with, with, uh, with the blue mold that's in it, which gives it kind of like a salty, a um, little bit of a gaminess. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. And, which is uh, kind of nice. Yeah, it's gaminess, been, earthiness, it's been sitting out too, which in, oh, the, in this heat is like really yeah. I mean, just nice. melting. You know what we're serving it with, Rob? Who does not like almond roca? Oh yeah. Right? Okay, almond roca, you guys, which I just learned. You know where it comes from? Okay, we... Um, what can I going to say? I don't know. I always assumed it came from like Belgium uh -huh. or somewhere like that. Tacoma. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Washington. So this is like almond a regional roca. pairing. Like it's a regional pairing. It's a Northwest pairing. Pacific Northwest pairing. <laughs> the <laughs> almond roca with the um, smoky blue. Um, almond roca toffee rolled in chocolate and crushed almonds oh yeah super good uh -huh. right um and i was like what's the difference between toffee and caramel mm -hmm. and i learned the only difference is that caramel uses cream toffee uses butter but then that's kind of the difference but they're both delicious yeah you can't go wrong either way. yeah always good with cheese smoky blue at the creamery mm -hmm. they sell truffles rob that are the smoky blue truffles with chocolate you know so it's like a chocolate chocolate, chocolate truffle. cheese in the middle correct oh, yeah boy. man so jump right in and see what you think of All the right. smoky blue i'm just gonna figure out how i want to eat this i think i'm gonna do two like little bites i'm gonna do a bite of the cheese followed by a bite of the roca yeah see what you think uh, everybody asks where you can get the liqueurs. You can get them at Bottlecraft in uh, North Park. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do we think with the um, smoky and the toffee? Do you like that? That's awesome. Is it awesome? Mm -hmm. Is it the best like dessert ever? Or a good dessert? I love it. Mm -hmm. So I love the texture okay. that the Roca gives to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, um, the cheese is, is um, it, it the actually smoke. has mm -hmm. like almost like gives a burn. Okay. The, so, mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. the cheese itself is very, especially since it's sitting out, is very uh, mouth coating. It's mm -hmm. just, and then you have the sweet with the salty. There's just a lot going on. And the smoke. The, and the smoke, smoke with the, the smoke, chocolate yeah. is good. The smoke with the nuts is good. Mm -hmm. It's like a smoked charred nut. Awesome. Oh, I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. I think, I like that a lot. <laughs> Smoky blue, Oregon. Oh, that's nice. I wonder if you could, um, hmm. Mm. Mm. We're gonna have to think of a little um, holiday treat here with this one, but that's I a, like it. A really fun one, we do mm -hmm. that a lot for try with the pairings is um, chocolate and blue cheese tend to go really well together. Yeah, it's and it's not thought of often, mm -hmm. but blue is often thought of as a dessert mm -hmm. and chocolate is, so mm -hmm. it kind of goes hand in hand that yeah. it would be good. If anyone's a fan of ice cream, Rob, I just learned too, speaking of dessert and blue cheese. If anyone's cheese, a fan of ice cream, Okay, yeah, dumb. Me? Okay. <laughs> if you're not a fan of ice cream, that's weird, but... <laughs> Same with cheese. <laughs> and cheese. So get this. Mm. Salt and Straw, famous ice cream chain. Uh -huh. They are... We have one here in San Diego. Uh, they have one right now, Rob, that is smoke... Uh, Rogue River Blue. Yeah. Excuse me. A sister blue to this smoky blue from Rogue Creamery with candied pears. Oh, wow. Right? Doesn't that sound good? I think Salt and Straw is from Oregon, uh, too. Portland. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Portland yeah exactly. So, anyways, they're using one of oh, their, cool. their some local cheese into their ice cream. Yum, right? Yeah, I, I mm -hmm. really like their flavors. They, they've had a flavor with Humboldt Fog, too, which um, oh, yeah. I mentioned Humboldt, Humboldt Fog. Fog. Yep, so they get really creative. They'll do flavors. some things with, yeah, a uh, goat, another Humboldt, mm -hmm. yeah, and peppers, but really, really good. Um, wow, I, will, I really, that was probably my favorite, I would say. Was that your absolute mm -hmm. favorite now? Yeah. Ooh, mine today. I'm gonna say I might be might be the Elvis. I don't know why. I'm it's between the Elvis. that and the mm -hmm. Elvis. Mm -hmm. What do we call this one? This the smoky. What would you call it? I'm sure the, you've got something. The smoky. The rokey smoky. Smoky <laughs> rokey. <laughs> Give him time, you guys, because yeah. I'll tell you this. Oh, there's going to be an preview. upcoming preview <laughs> of a tasting. Rob is known for. Let me backtrack. When we first opened, we said everybody has to have a cheese title and based on maybe their favorite cheese. At the time, my favorite was called Boschetto, so I deemed myself the Baroness of Boschetto. 
Rob, what was your first title? Well, the first one you was can't the mo too much. Mozzarella di Buffalo Soldier. My second one was, I, I said it last time, so mm -hmm. my second one was Eddie Munster. So there you have it. We're going to do a whole tasting plate on Rob's cheese names, and that's coming up in a few weeks. And some honorable <laughs> mentions. And honorable mentions, yes, but all very good. <laughs> um, but if we have any other questions, oh my word. Um, Everyone's liking Carol too, yeah. With you, the, the smoky blue mm -hmm. and the chocolate, the toffee, the almond roca. Mm -hmm. I love the truffle tremor with the cola too, yep. but I think the, the the smoky blue with the almond roca was new for me. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what's like, okay. like this why it's winning interesting. the day. Um, and then the Pleasant Ridge with the banana and peanut butter. I, I've never had that combination of all three of those and, and that particular cheese, so okay. that's... So that was a good one. That's good for me right now. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. Well, Loving everybody, it. Friday it is. Yeah. <laughs> Finish Freaky up the Friday. Pie. Freaky Friday. I hope you like the Negronis. There was a question where you can get the little bottles. Um, we got the ours at Bottlecraft. We have a little shop at North Park inside Bottlecraft. They have minis of everything, mm -hmm. and they know how to mix them up. They actually call this trio, I got to give them credit for this, the Tigroni. Because it's to go. <laughs> yeah. To Gronies, um, but the big bottles you can get at like a Bevmo, yeah, um, for sure. So all of these I have seen at Bevmo. There's a well, the there's one in Del Cerro called Kagan Kagan Bottle, I think. Oh yeah, you mentioned that. Which mm -hmm. I've been, I've mm -hmm. I've gotten stuff there for some of these mm -hmm. tastings, like the mini bottles. If you're looking for those, so. yeah, yeah. Um, but always good and fun to experiment. Um, I think I'm gonna finish more Negroni, and then it is time to open my tummy. My tummy is open for another <laughs> cup of meal, and then I I will finish probably with a just. That's just Steve. I like your style. The rest of the pepperoni this evening. It's Friday, so yeah. let the weekend begin. It, let the weekend begin. And I know a lot of you already know, next up is Winer Wednesday. Gruner. Gruner. Is it Gruner? Gruner. Gruner Veltliner. <laughs> a white wine from Austria, which is, oh, let's say Austria. You can't even see it on the map. It's so small. Uh -huh. um, but my, Which is my mom's hometown. Hometown. Home country. Uh -huh. uh, so. Gruner, Gruner Wendliner. Somewhere around there. Where all the stars are, the yeah. big star. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, thank you guys. Have a wonderful weekend. I think I got everyone's questions. Um, and hope you just have fun being wacky. Pull, look in your cupboards. You've got whatever you got. Put it with some cheese and mm -hmm. you'll be surprised. It's really, really good. So I guess we'll see you uh, next time. Yeah. Have a great weekend. See you next week. Ciao. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Ciao. Cheers to cheese. <laughs> like we like to say. <laughs> Bye.